Okay, welcome everyone uh, to another fascinating evening. We are going to um, we are going to continue now in the book of uh, Mishle, the book of Proverbs, chapter three, verses number seventeen and eighteen. So let's take a look. These are very very famous verses. We read them actually. We say it in our liturgy when we return the Torah to the Aron, to the Ark, to its proper place. And we're going to talk about some of the implications of that and the meaning of these verses. Her ways are pleasant ways and all her paths are peaceful. All right, its ways are pleasant and all of its paths are peace. We're talking about the Torah. We're describing the benefits of the wisdom of Torah. A great deal of this book, the book of Proverbs, covers the virtues of wisdom. Now, interestingly, let's focus on the word shalom, on the word peace. Peace is the foundation of our Torah. It is divine. In fact, shalom is one of the names that are listed for God. It's interesting because in our Torah portions the last few weeks, we've been talking about the very, very first synagogue, which was the Mishkan, the tabernacle, the uh, miniature portable sanctuary that we Jews carried around in ancient times. But it's interesting. People use the word shechina, all right, which comes you know, from that word Mishkan. But in fact, shechina is not listed as one of the names of God. But the word shalom actually is, the word peace actually is one of God's names, because that is what we are supposed to strive to have. We're supposed to strive to have peace. Peace is the ultimate seal. It holds everything together. It's at the beginning, the end, and even in between. You know, it's funny. I don't know how many of you were fans of the famous television program called All in the Family. It was on many, many years ago. And there was a Jewish man who came into the home of Archie Bunker. And uh, he said, um, before he left, he said, Shalom. And his wife asked, you know, um, Archie Bunker's wife asked, you know, what, what does that mean? And he said, it means peace. And um, his daughter said, that Jews also use the term to say hello and goodbye. So the question became, well, if it's hello and goodbye, when does it mean peace? So Archie Bunker said, in between hello and goodbye, shalom means peace. So it may sound funny, but it may sound humorous, but in fact, he's correct. Peace is what holds the beginning and the end, the hello and goodbye together. We strive for peace. We conclude our Amidah, with a prayer for peace. The rabbis tell us that every prayer has to end with a prayer for peace. It's even included, uh, we include it at the end of Berkat HaMazon, you know, after we make the blessing, uh, the concluding blessing over um, over uh, bread, over, uh, over a significant meal. We have it in the Berkat Kohanim, in the priestly blessing. The, um, the priests bless us with many things, but ultimately, the ultimate blessing, the most important blessing, is the blessing of peace. And of course, um, okay, Yosef put into the chat, shalom by, shalom by it. You know, you want to have peace in your home. Peace in your home. It's a very important thing. Um, you know, shalom by it doesn't mean eviction from the home where you say shalom by it, you know, goodbye house. It means having a peace, having serenity in your home where people get along People are uh, nice to each other, are kind to each other, uh, enlighten each other. That is a uh, that is what a uh, Jewish home is supposed to be. Uh, additionally, when God created everything, right? God created first the heavens, and then um, this required shalom. It required peace because the heavens is a combination of fire and water, which are opposite forces. God combined them together, um, you know, to, to create a certain precedent, all right? It was the power of peace that opposite forces can work in harmony, can work in unity. 
that's something very important to understand because often in the world or even in our home or uh, wherever we are, we meet people with opposite points of view. And it's very important that each one of us, you know, give a certain amount of deference to the other point of view. Now, that's not a very popular thing to do today, but uh, it is a very important thing uh, to consider that we should um, have respect for people's views or the, you know, there could be an opposite viewpoint. And uh, we don't have to go nuts when we hear something that may not fully agree with our um, outlook on life. So shalom is very important. God wants us to have uh, wants us to have shalom. Now, um, look, uh, you know there there is exceptions to that. Also, I mean, you know, we can't always have peace. Sometimes we have to have truth. You know, it says in the book of Zechariah, "Vaha emet vaha shalom ehavu." He who loves truth loves peace. Sometimes we have to arrive at truth uh, in order to uh, come to uh, a place of peace and tranquility and serenity. So that's something very important. Now, this may seem strange to you. The next verse afterwards says, She is a tree of life to those who grasp her and whoever holds onto her is happy. It is a tree of life for those who grab onto it. And those who support it are praiseworthy is the traditional interpretation. So let's talk a little bit about this. Um, we talk about holding on to the Torah, right? In other words, that's why the Torah has poles, so you can hold on to it, you can embrace the Torah. And when you hold on to the Torah, it means embracing the principles of the Torah, embracing the message of the Torah, that we take hold of it, we grab onto it so that it is a guide for our lives, that everything we do should be with the recognition that the Torah is guiding us, that God's word is, um, is the um, path, is our madrik, so to speak, is our um, guide to a meaningful life. Those who support the Torah are praiseworthy, are happy, are happy, are miushar. Um, are, are rich, are happy, etc. That's what it means. So, you know, we have a couple of components here. We have happiness. You'll do it because we believe very strongly that the Torah has the tools to create a meaningful and happy life. We're not supposed to be miserable. That's not, not what the Torah is designed to do. Many people think that, but I try to impress upon people that living a life according to the Torah is not as difficult as it may appear to be, and it can actually be a very, very happy experience. So that's what it's telling us uh, to do. In other words, take the wisdom of the Torah, take the understanding of the Torah, and use all these things to provide you uh, a happy life. Now, happy doesn't always mean convenient, you know, but I think it also can give you the peace of mind that you're doing the right things. So how come, is it an obvious question here, why is it that these verses are in reverse, right? Because when we take out the Torah, excuse me, when we put back the Torah, we say, and then we back up to verse number 17. And we say, shalom. Why? There are a couple of reasons for that. One of them is that when we turn the Torah back to the ark before Musaf, before the additional prayer, which is said on Shabbat and Yom Tov, essentially we are looking to a messianic redemption. All right. Because how do we end everything? After that, we conclude, Chadesh Yomenu Kikedim, renew our days as of old, right? When we once had the great holy temple, you know, think about those days, think back to the days when we were uh, living, when we under redemption, you know, when we had, um, when we were living in a, um, in the Geulah, when we were living in a time 
when our spiritual lives were complete and we want to have um, another spiritual life that is of such great meaning that, you know, when the Messiah, Messiah arrives and we will have our temple restored, etc., we look forward to leading such a life. So essentially, it's going in the order of what it's telling us. It's 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 uh, telling us firstly to accept the Torah, accept it as a tree of life, as a living organism in your life, and you do that, you'll be happy. And once you do that, we're going to um, we will realize that the path of the Torah is um, pleasantness. The ways of the Torah are pleasant. And all of its paths will lead you to peace, will lead you to that messianic era, a time of peace and tranquility, if you follow those instructions. And that's really why we arrive at that order. And there's another concept as well, which I think is a more basic concept um, for living a meaningful life. We accept upon ourselves the Torah as a, as a tree of life, right? And we also accept upon ourselves to be happy people, right? To be people who are, uh, lead a happy life. That's uh, num number two, right? So you have the Torah, happiness. And finally, once we have those two components in our lives, we can arrive at a place of peace, all right? It's not enough just to have Torah because there's no virtue in living a life according to the Torah and being miserable, all right? There's no mitzvah to be miserable, okay? And happiness divorced of Torah is a terrible thing because sure, we wanna be happy. Uh, there's a time to be happy. There's a time to be sad, but ultimately we wanna be happy. It's a mitzvah to be happy. In fact, um, worshiping God, we say, Ivdu et Hashem b'simcha, worship the Lord in simcha, in joy, right? So, but the joy has to be in accordance with the principles of the Torah. So once you have the Torah, once you have happiness, those two components will lead you to the final destination, and that is of peace. So um, that's the uh, lesson for uh, this, uh, this evening. I want to thank you very much for joining us. We'll... Um, be back next time in two weeks. I want to tell you that we're going to be on Zoom next uh, one week from today, Tuesday, but in the morning, Tuesday at 8.30 a.m. for our Purim Megillah reading service and hope uh, you can join us for that. So thank you very, very much for, uh, for watching.